Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23, we read, Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. Here is Bernice, Terry, and Tim to sing The Healer. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures in order to find the answers in God's holy word. Question number one, what is the criteria for getting into heaven? This is perhaps the most foremost question that anyone could possibly ask as they come to the scriptures. What is it that makes me pleasing or what makes it that I am acceptable in the presence of God so that he would desire to spend all eternity with me and that I might share in the glories of glory. In Acts chapter 16, the Apostle Paul comes to Philippi and the best answer comes in Acts chapter 16, verses 31 and it is, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. This 
is in response to a Philippian jailer who asked specifically a like question, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Essentially, these are the same questions. How is it that I am pleasing to the Lord? How is it that I access His presence? How is it that I come before Him in robes that are clean and white? How is it that I am saved from myself and from my sin, my shame, my burden of guilt? And here, the Apostle Paul, in company with Silas, they respond, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people say, is that not too simple? Is there not something being left out? Paul would declare, absolutely not. We are saved by the grace of God, and we are saved simply in, by trusting in what Christ has done for us. We believe, we trust in Him and what He has provided for us, and thereby we are saved, thereby we gain access to heaven. The criteria for entering in, into glory is not what have we done for the Lord, but rather have we accepted what He has done for us, and is that our confidence and our trust? Question number two, what is the fruit Jesus is talking about in John chapter 15 and the first seven verses? Here at the outset of John chapter 15, Jesus is referring His disciples to himself as the true vine, his father as the vine dresser, and he speaks of us as the branches. And really he's saying the fruit is Christ-like attributes and character. Christ-like attributes and character, the sap which comes from the main stem or the, the main stalk of the vine, that flows into the branches. And so that which is in Christ, that flows into us. We could also go to Galatians chapter 5 and verses 22 and 23, which speak of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These things which were in abundance in Christ and which the Apostle Paul speaks of as the fruit or the outworking of the Spirit, that is to be in us and Jesus, he desires that to be mightily at work within us. And so here we have what that fruit is that is spoken of in John chapter 15. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us and we will use it as we are able. Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6 is the address that you need to use. And now we have Heidi and Dorothy singing on that happy shore and that is followed by the male quartet singing over the Sunset Mountain.
We are pleased to offer you once again my father's book of 16 sermons taken from the New Testament epistle of Paul to the Romans, as well as the book we have also prepared as a bonus, this scripture reading CD taken from the King James Version with myself as the reader. Many of you already have the book. Perhaps you would wish to have simply the CD, or perhaps you would like to have both as a companion to give to someone else. Both of them are yours simply upon your request. These resources of Faith to Live By are always sent free and postage paid without any obligation whatsoever. You may have Romans, the book, the CD, or both when you write and request to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. You may also call our toll-free phone number 1-833-367-3852 or our website Faith to Live By also has the means of you contacting us with your request. Now Heidi Taves and Rick Bowring team up to sing Saved by Grace. <laughs> I suspect that I am absolutely no different than other gospel preachers in that there are certain portions of the scripture which draw my attention and to which I come back to repeatedly without apology. One of the portions which attracts my attention and from which I preach repeatedly in whatever situation I find myself is Acts chapter 16, where the apostle Paul is finding himself in company with Silas, his evangelistic companion in the city of Philippi. And also in Acts chapter 16, this is where Luke joins the evangelistic party. Luke does not name him through the pages of either the gospel account or the book of Acts, but we subtly find him including himself as we come to Acts chapter 16 and verse 10. 
Previously, Luke wrote, they did this, when he was referring perhaps to Peter, James, John, or whoever it might have been in the earliest chapters of Acts. But suddenly, as we are paying careful attention, when we come to Acts chapter 16 and verse 10, suddenly we go from they did this and they went to such and such a place. Luke now says, when he, Paul, had seen the vision, he had seen a vision of a man calling to him from Macedonia, come over and help us. When Paul had seen this vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Here, Luke suddenly is not simply learning what is taking place from others and writing it down for his addressee, Theophilus, now he is an eyewitness. And we come to Philippi, and perhaps those who speculate that Luke was from Philippi because of his keen interest in three individuals there, and I think that there is great merit to this, I think that Luke indeed was of Philippi, that was his hometown, and that the transformation which was took place in these three lives, Luke paid very special attention to because he had known them previously, and then he knew them as those transformed by the power of God. Three individuals, so very different. First of all, there is the only one who is named by name, Lydia, a woman of considerable wealth, a seller of the beautiful purple fabric, originally from Thyatira. She is there, and her heart is the one that is most open to the gospel. Paul and Silas, not finding a synagogue in Philippi, they go down by the river where they, would, they suppose there would be a place of prayer. Sure enough, they find some women who have gathered there and as Paul begins to speak, the Lord opens Lydia's heart, and she hears the good news of Jesus Christ, and she becomes a believer, and she presses upon Paul and Silas that they might enjoy hospitality at her expense in her home, and that is where they make their base for the ministry which will take place in days ahead in Philippi. Paul and Silas, they're making their way about this great city of importance. Yet there is a certain woman, a demon-possessed slave girl, who was earning much money, not for herself, but for her masters by fortune-telling. She is going after Paul and Silas, crying out, these men are servants of the Most High God, proclaiming to you the way of salvation. There are certain advertisements which you simply do not want. They are contrary. They are in conflict with the message. Here, demons proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ or alerting people. Paul, utterly frustrated, he turns and he casts out the demon from this woman and she is set at liberty, at glorious liberty. Immediately, those who owned this woman, they realize that the hope of their prophet has evaporated before their very eyes. And so they take Paul and Silas immediately to the magistrates, and they make the claim that these men are throwing our city into confusion, being Jews, and are proclaiming customs which it is not lawful for us to accept or to observe being Romans. Now, there was nothing to that charge, for Paul himself was both a Jew and a Roman. To be the two was not in conflict, but these, they stirred up the magistrates and they demanded that something be done in order that no more damage would come to their pocketbook. And so it is that Paul and Silas, without trial of any kind, are summarily beaten with rods and they are thrown into the jail. 
Two people have had their lives changed. Lydia, as well as that anonymous slave girl, we never do find out her name. But then, in, at midnight, Paul and Silas singing praises to God. Surely this is evidence that God has been so at work in their lives, whereas others, they might lick their wounds and they might be all grumpy and complaining about the treatment that they had received. Here, Paul and Silas, they exult in tribulation. Read Romans 5, what it has to say about believers. We now take a different view on how we value our values and prioritize our priorities. We exult in tribulation. This is exactly what Paul and Silas did. And they're singing praises to God. And all of a sudden that night, even as the other prisoners are listening to them, though the jailer has fallen into a deep sleep, we find that there is a shaking and the doors fly open and the chains fly off of the wrists of each and every one of those prisoners. The jailer awakes out of his slumber and comes stumbling in, calling for lights. He is about to kill himself, sure that, sure that every prisoner who had even the briefest moment would have escaped. Paul cries out from the midst of the darkness and he says, do yourself no harm, we are all here. And the jailer, he calls for those lights and he comes in, falling down in front of Paul and Silas and he says, what must I do to be saved? I come back to this so vital, so important. Whatever other question you might ask of the Bible or whatever other truth, you need to come to Acts chapter 16 and this conclusion of the story of Philippi and hear what Paul had to say. He said, believe. It wasn't, well, get out your pocketbook and pay. Or get out your pen. I have an enrollment form here. You have a course of study which you must complete. Or I have a committee. I have a board on which you are to serve on. And if you serve for 10 years, then you will be eligible for consideration. And if you serve for 20 years, you will be all that much closer. If you serve for 40 or 50 years, you will be a definite shoe in. The Apostle Paul said none of those things. He said, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right here, right now, you will be saved. You will be confident that your sins are forgiven. You will be confident that the old is done away with and that you have passed from death into life. Let me ask you if you have asked this question of yourself and whether you have come to this satisfactory answer. What must I do to be saved? Let every man and every woman ask it and let them hear this response. Believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Not maybe, you will be saved and saved today. There's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.